The relationship between electric potential, or voltage, and electric current is shown in the chart at right. As you might expect, the two are correlated. The relationship is linear, with a slope equal to the resistance of the light bulb. Notice that if you increase the resistance of the light bulb, the slope of the line increases, meaning that you have lower current for the same electric potential. Let's add several light bulbs in series. This means that the current must flow through each of the bulbs in sequence. We can see that the current in the circuit decreases overall, and the slope of the graph at right is getting steeper. The overall resistance is now higher. Notice as well that each light bulb is glowing less bright than the single bulb was glowing on its own before. The power dissipated in any light bulb, a measure of its brightness, is just the product of the voltage drop across that bulb and the current flowing through it. In series, all the bulbs have the same amount of current flowing through them. We can reason this out as follows. The voltage drop measures the electric potential difference of charges before and after they pass through the resistor. If you multiply this potential by their charge, you get the change in their potential energy. The rate at which charges move through the resistor is defined by the electric current. The product of these, current times voltage, must give the rate at which potential energy is dissipated by the charges. This is the emitted power. Notice that in the region above the circuit diagram at top left, you can see labels for the dissipated power, current, and electrical resistance. Increasing the resistance of each bulb with the slider lowers the current and drops the dissipated power. The bulbs glow more dimly. Let's now change the configuration to parallel rather than series. This means that the current from the power supply splits and is divided between all of the bulbs. Since each bulb has the same resistance, the current is divided equally in this case. The current flowing out of the battery is much higher now than when the bulbs were wired in series. This is because the overall electrical resistance of the circuit is now much lower. Well, how can that be? Didn't we leave all the bulbs at the same resistance? Why should wiring them in parallel mean that they now provide less overall resistance? Here's an analogy. Now we have to be careful with analogies because they can help and hurt at the same time. Let's pretend that each resistor is a narrow pipe through which the water can flow. If you line up a lot of these pipes in a row in series, they all constrict water flow. However, if you bundle them together, parallel to one another, they form a kind of big pipe. This big pipe lets a lot of water flow. Similarly, resistors wired in parallel have a much lower resistance than resistors wired in series. If you're interested in seeing this analogy in action, check out our simulation called Electric Analogies. Note that in the parallel configuration, the voltage drop across each bulb is the same, that provided by the power supply. The voltage doesn't drop from bulb to bulb as when they are wired in series. This is a key reason the bulbs are so much brighter in parallel configuration. The last configuration we can choose in this simulation is a mixed configuration. Here we have one bulb in series with two bulbs in parallel and a final bulb in series with all of these. The voltage drops three times, first across the first bulb, then across both of the parallel bulbs simultaneously, and then across the final bulb. The current running through the first and last bulb is the same, and it splits evenly through the two bulbs in parallel. The two series bulbs are now brighter than the two parallel bulbs, showing once again that the wiring configuration really matters to how bright a bulb actually appears. Thanks for watching.